By emitting ionized xenon gas through a small thruster port, the PB-ion can produce incredibly efficient propulsion, but with the downside of very low thrust and high expense. The general perception of this engine as being powered by witchcraft has unfortunately given it a sour reputation. Yes, that's right, today we look at the ion engine. So, as someone on the forums so wisely said, ions are like that smart, nerdy kid at the back of the class. They're incredibly efficient at what they do, but no one seems to appreciate it. Well, today we're going to take a moment to appreciate the ion engine. So why do people dislike this engine, you may ask? Well, it could be the extremely high electrical requirements, or it could be the hilariously low thrust, or perhaps it's just the fact that it doesn't set things on fire. Generally speaking, the electrical requirements and low thrust of this engine seem to dissuade people from using it, even though it has an extremely high ISP of 4200. That's over five times more efficient than the highly favoured nuclear engine. I think that the ION engine kind of deserves to be used more, and recognised as what it really is, the most efficient engine in the KSP universe. So what I'm going to do today is show you some of the uses an ion engine has. Use number one, landing and taking off from some small moons. The ion engine, although weak on its own, can be used to land on some of the smaller moons in the game. With a small craft I built in half an hour, I managed to land and regain orbit on Minimus, as Carbon's outer moon, Gilly, Eve's moon, and Bop and Paul, two of Jules outer moons. It's, I think this thing is also possible to land on some other celestial bodies, such as Ike, which is Juno moon, and Drays, which is the fifth planet from Kerbal. Um, but that kind of takes a lot more designing. So, I mean, it's prob probably possible to design a craft capable of lifting off of many more celestial bodies with iron propulsion. Um, I know for a fact that liftoff from the moon has been achieved with iron propulsion. Link to a video showing this is in the uh, video description, so go check that out. So um, even if this engine is not the primary engine of a landing, it can provide a little extra thrust and a lot of control when landing at very low speeds. So you'll see me, um, my wee ship just flying around and uh, uh, landing on several bodies. Because the gravity on this is a bit higher than before, um, say on Minimus, it takes a wee bit longer just to land, and so I've skipped over most of it, and we can just see it coming down gracefully and going to hit the ground at a very low speed, hopefully. And you can see my speed is, is gonna be kind of coming down to like uh, meters per second, you know, half a meter a second and stuff. You know, this is almost docking speed I'm coming in at. And the reason I'm doing that is because it looks a lot faster, just because I'm I'm kind of going with the reference frame of uh, of the small spaceship that I'm going with. You can see I, I time warped forward right there. That's just so that I can get a better angle on the sun. Unfortunately, I kind of realized that that wasn't going to work, and you can see some of my engines just kind of almost flaring out because they don't have enough electricity, but that's fine. What I decide to do is just point upwards and um, slightly to the side so that I use most of my energies just to pump it into a higher orbit and um, get that apple apps up. Once I've done that, I can just flip over to the side, and because of the way I've done this, um, I don't need to worry too much. I can just flip it around and the solar panels will be pointing backwards, gaining all of that lovely solar energy. And that's us, we have achieved orbit, again. Okay, now I'm not sure what's happening here with the, um, with the size of the image, but anyway, I'm coming down, and this is of course one of Jules moons, and we're gonna come down and we're just going to land on its surface. Now I have a little problem here, because, um, I don't have as much control over where I land. Most of this is just me breaking and hoping for the best, because if I try to choose a spot to land, I may not uh, come down slow enough, because I, I may want to choose a landing spot. You know, when, when you're trying to land with such weak engines, um, although it's possible, it's quite hard to choose your landing spot. Um, that's not to say you can't, you can, it just takes a lot more kind of time and planning than, uh, than I have. 
Another problem I have here is that I'm landing on a very steep hill. And I uh, come down, you can see my shadow, and you can also see the land. It's very, very steep. So instead of um, tilting the craft sideways before I land, I try to do it just as I touch down. So that I don't get any of that um, lateral movement before I touch down. So there we go, we come round for another pass, just a full orbit. Uh. <laughs> So we go for a full or orbit, and then we proceed to take off once again, flying into the air, just gracefully ascending into the abyss of space. Well, I say abyss of space, what I really mean is the, um, what is it? It really is an abyss, isn't it? It's more of just nothingness. Use number two, a more efficient control system in space. Although RCS is a nice, simple way to do things, it doesn't have the lure of a bright blue light, and its fuel is certainly won't last as long as that of the ion engine. So from now on you should all be using ion engines instead of RCS. This is a spacecraft which I have designed, it's very lovely, and it is designed to take a lovely little spaceship up into carbon orbit, just low carbon orbit. We're not going anywhere fancy with this, we're just going to go up and uh, do some interesting things with um, with some ion engines, something that you usually would not think about doing with ion engines. So you can see here, I've, I've lit it up a wee bit, got kind of a custom fairing there. I say custom, I don't mean as in I've got a fairing, I mean I've got like stock parts and turned them into fairings. Okay. First things first, seeing as we're using iron engines, we're going to need power. So, let's extend all these panels. Extending panels, the panels are extending, panels are extended. Okay, good. Now, time to turn on the engines. Now, the layout here probably suggests what I'm trying to do here. I am trying to do some ion, RCS style ion stuff. Which is really fun, actually. You get to spin your ship round at high speeds. Very good. Very wonderful. Beautiful. Great for pop parties. Uh, Jebediah and uh, Bill seem to love it. Basically a rave for them. They're just partying. Yeah. And of course, we have to slow down and stop. And we kind of deorbit it and... Uh, <clears> hmm. <throat> And we uh, deorbit it and uh, just let them drift peacefully to their inevitable doom. Um, no, I was actually trying to save them here. I forgot I put power. I forgot I didn't put parachutes on it, and so I was like, "No, please! I want to stop." And if I had had more time, I might have been able to stop. But I just I, I did my braking burn way too late. Use number three: ferrying fuel from ship to ship. When in orbit, it's much more fuel efficient to hand over your payload to an ion tug, which will then take it to the destination craft, than it is to take the entire ship, align orbits, get an encounter, brake, and dock, all with conventional rocket motors. This is much more efficient than, than tugging them with uh, conventional rockets or with RCS, um, because the mass that you use, the mass of the fuel, of course, is lower, and um, so, uh, and of course the engine is, is extremely, um, extremely efficient, so the, f the amount of fuel that you're using is also extremely low, um, which is brilliant because uh, it means that for tugging things, you will very rarely need to refuel, and even sending up refuels, uh, refueling packs will take a very, very small rocket. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you could build the rockets out of under 10 parts, you know, it's, it's, it's a very efficient way to get things done with ion engines. So I've just done a whole bunch of orbital maneuvers here, and the dog is barking in the background, but never mind the dog. Um, and you can, you can see we're coming in to Space Station 1, I believe I've called it. This is complete nonsense, though I, I don't actually use the space station. This is a testy space station, just to see that, show you how incredibly efficient this mechanism is to getting near to things and docking and whatnot. Now, I do admit, I did use RCS to actually do the docking. Um, I could have used the ion engines, but I decided that I would have more control and le less likelihood to smash into the panels and kill everyone. However, if you wanted to, I'm sure that you could use the ion engines on the tug to 
um, dock this on. Use number four, long-lasting aircraft. Some have already used iron engines to fly aircraft around, and for good reason too. The iron engine's ISP remains constant in atmosphere, and as such, it can allow your electrical aircraft to remain in the air almost indefinitely, as long as you're carrying enough xenon. This, of course, is an ion plane. Really, it's more of a powered glider than a plane. A plane suggests that, um, you know, it actually flies like a plane. This flies more like a glider, a powered glider. It's, on, it's always on the verge of falling out the sky. It takes a lot of uh, effort to keep it from falling out of the sky. <laughs> really, it's just a pain in the butt to fly. However, it's fine because it's, it's just the achievement of being able to fly uh, an ion plane. It's just brilliant. And honestly, it looks cool. I mean, who doesn't like having little blue things on their, on their, on their planes? I'm pretty sure that having ion engines looks way cooler than any other form of flight or, or anything really for that matter. Okay, and we're finally coming in for our descent on the, on the island runway, and we come down, <laughs> and that accidentally happens, and I, I slide to the side by accident. My plane designing is not very good. Um, I slap this together, and I happen to roll to the side, and just coincidentally happen to roll in, into the hangar and out the other side, which was brilliant because it meant that, um, well, not to die. So we take a wee look at the Mark 1 pod and some of the older parts, that little easter egg there, and of course we hop around to take off again. So all systems go, time for a launch, and we have to use the entire um, runway to kind of launch because you need to pick up a lot of speed. This plane, this plane will usually stall at about uh, 20 meters a second, um, 20 meters, well, I say stall, it'll stall maybe at 15, but to take off, um, you kind of need, um, about 20 meters a second to actually lift off. Any less than that, and you won't get a very good lift off, you'll just come back down. We do some minor course corrections during this flight. It does have a tendency to, uh, kind of slide to the left and right. I think that's because of the lack of, um what's it called, ailerons? I have no idea. The lack of little sticky up things that you usually see on like jets and stuff on the top and bottom or top. And we come in for our landing. Here we go. And of course, what do we do with this wonderful ship? We take a look at the Mark 1 Memorial Pod. We went to see the old Mark 1 uh, pod and so we went to go see it again. Now, Ion powered aircraft are very popular on planets where, with atmospheres where jet engines won't work, such as Duna and Eve. Of course, we're not going to just use this on carbon, that would be ridiculous. So, let's have a look at how it works on a planet with an atmosphere, atmosphere? atmosphere much uh, thicker than our, than our own lovely home world of carbon. And you can see even this high up over Eve, the atmosphere is extremely thick. And it's it's the, the the prograde marker is sticking to my directional marker like it's not even like really going anywhere. This thing could glide for a very long time, and I'm not even powering up the ion engines. Those are more of just um, helpful little thrusters to give me a bit of a boost, maybe when taking off. Um, really, when it comes to Eve, you can do this kind of thing. You know, I've got these ion thrusters on, and it is just brilliant. You can go very low, you can go very slow. Um, you can see I'm down to like 13. Is it 13 or 15? I can't really see from the size of this uh, small thing that I'm looking at. But um, yeah, you know, you can get really low. I mean, look how low I'm getting right here. Um, I just decide, you know what, I'm going to go as low as I possibly can. And I'm basically scraping the surface of Eve and I decide to put on my gear so I don't blow up and lo and behold I land. And and of course I can take off again, wonderful little taking off thing here, uh, bring up the gear, uh, of course taking off is much easier um, than, uh, you know, normally, because we have a lot thicker atmosphere and the ion engines can do their job well. I then decide to try and speed up by using the, the old uh, wave of the control surfaces, but alas, I lose control of my ship and, uh, and crash it into the terrain of Eve, and um, 
just accidentally make an impact probe. Um, this thing does have, of course, little solar panels on it, so it will live there forever and never send back data because it doesn't have an antenna on it. However, I do seem to have created a new form of life. I'm not sure how that really works, but I seem to have created a, what is that, a tumbleweed? Um, some form of advanced transformer-like creature that's going to take over the eve surface, or is it just, no, no, it's just going to roll around. Okay, well, um... We're going to send a little message back to, a little memo back to Kerbin just to make sure that don't, no one lands near this site again and, uh, you know, gets eaten by the monstrosity that is uh, this new form of life that we have accidentally created. <laughs> okay, well that is all for me, guys. Uh, I hope this will be an enjoyable little thingy, little introduction to Ion Engines, and I hope I've inspired you to go away and create your own little contraptions and things out of Ion Engines. I'd love to see them. If you do happen to go out and create some cool Ion things, um, leave them as a video response, um, and, you know, that would be cool. Um, you could always do that. If you want the craft files, they are also in the description. Links to downloads in the description, mon. And I'm also planning on doing a form of Let's Play for KSP, a modded Let's Play. I don't want to reveal too much at this point, I'm going to do a pilot episode first and see how that goes. If you guys like it, then, well, <laughs> we shall continue and we'll do a Let's Play. But, until then, that's me, Kerbinaut here, Kerbinaut's not here. <laughs> um, see you guys later, have a great day.